vectors, and scalar quantities. A scalar is any quantity that has magnitude only. This means it has number value with units. Some examples are speed and distance. A vector is any quantity that has both magnitude and direction. This means it has number value with units plus direction. Some examples are velocity, acceleration, and displacement. Vector quantities can be identified by bold type, with an arrow above the symbol. Also, vectors are represented by drawing arrows which can be horizontal, vertical, oblique, or towards any position, which shows its direction. And take note, the length, and direction of a vector, should be drawn to a reasonable scale size, and show its magnitude. In here, notice that, the length of the second vector, was drawn about half of the first vector, here are some rules that we can follow on application of vectors. When two vectors point in the same direction, we can simply add them together. When vectors are added together they should be drawn head to tail to determine the resultant or sum vector. And, the resultant goes from tail of A to head of B. Let's have an example. A man walks 46.5 meters east, then another 20 meters east. Calculate his displacement relative to where he started. This is the first vector. Then the second vector. Take note, that we are drawing them head, to tail. The head of the first is attached to the tail of the second. The resultant vector goes from tail of the first to the head of the last. Also, notice that both vectors, point towards the same direction. They both point towards east. Thus, we can simply add their magnitudes. When two vectors point in the opposite direction, we can simply subtract them. And, the resultant still goes from tail of A to head of B. Let's have an example. A man walks 46.5 meters east, then another 20 meters west. Calculate his displacement relative to where he started. This is the first vector, then the second vector. Notice that they point in opposite directions, since one is pointing east, and the other one is pointing west. Since the vectors point in opposite directions, we can simply subtract their magnitudes. And, here is the resultant. Then subtracting magnitudes, it's 46.5 minus 20, we get 26.5 meters east. The graphical method is used by aligning vectors head to tail and then drawing the resultant from the tail of the first to the head of the last. When using the graphical method, you may follow these steps First draw a start point. Next decide on a scale. 
The scale is the length of your arrow in proportion to the actual magnitude. Then, draw a vector A to scale. Remember, vector B's tail begin at vector A's head. Make sure to draw vector B to scale. Then, draw a line connecting the initial start point to the head of B. This is called the resultant. This shows the commutative property of vectors. This shows that interchanging the order of the vectors does not affect the result. It still gives you the same resultant. Let us move to solving problems involving non-collinear vectors. When two vectors are perpendicular to each other, we must use the Pythagorean theorem. Let's try this. A man travels 120 kilometers east, then 160 kilometers north. Calculate his resultant displacement. This is the first vector, then the second vector. Here is the resultant. This is the line starting from the tail of the first vector to the head of the last vector. Notice that, the two vectors are perpendicular. Thus, we can use the Pythagorean theorem. This is the horizontal component, designated as A. This is the vertical component, designated as B. And this is the resultant vector, designated as C. This is the formula for the Pythagorean Theorem. The resultant vector C is the hypotenuse. Let's just use the given magnitude of vectors for A and B. The answer is 200 kilometers. Notice, that what we have solved so far is the magnitude of the resultant vector. What about the direction? To answer that, we need to understand cardinal directions, and angle of rotation. The cardinal directions are the four main points in your compass. The north, south, east, and west points. And your resultant vector may lie somewhere in between these points. If the angle of rotation starts from east to the north, then the direction is north of east. But if the angle of rotation starts from north going to east, then it's east of north. The same with the other points. It can be south of west, or west of south. North of west, or west of north. South of east, or east of south. Going back to our problem. The angle of rotation follows the movement of the vectors. In this case, the angle formed by the first vector, and resultant vector, has direction north of east. Take note, there is a difference between, north of west, and west of north. This is 30 degrees north of west. While this is 30 degrees west of north. To find the value of the angle, we can use a trig function, called tangent. The formula for tangent is opposite over adjacent. When we substitute, then solving, we get 1.333. This means, the value of angle theta is, arctan of 1.333. This is equal to 53.1 degrees. 
Thus the answer is 200 km, at 53.1 degrees north of east. Let's have another one. Suppose a person walked 50 meters at 30 degrees north of east, what were his horizontal and vertical components? In here we can use the formula for the cosine and sine functions. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. From there, we can derive the formulas for adjacent and opposite. Adjacent which is the horizontal component is equal to 50 times cosine 30. This results to 43.30 meters east. Opposite which is the vertical component is equal to 50 sine 30. This results to 25 meters north. Let's try another one. Suppose a person walked 65 meters, 25 degrees east of north. What were his horizontal and vertical components? Again, let's make use of so, cop, toa. Then derive the formula for adjacent equal to hypotenuse times cosine theta and formula for opposite equal to hypotenuse times sine theta. In this case, the adjacent which is the vertical component is equal to 65 times cosine 25. This results to 58.91 meters north. The opposite which is the horizontal component is equal to 65 times sine 25. This results to 27.47 meters east. Let's try this one. A lion, searching for food wanders 35 meters east, then 20 meters north. Frustrated, it wanders another 12 meters west, then 6 meters south, Calculate the lion's displacement. Let's draw the vectors. First vector 35 meters east. Second vector 20 meters north. Third vector 12 meters west. Last vector 6 meters south. Notice that there are two horizontal vectors. And they are in opposite directions. Thus, we can subtract them. Resultant vector is 23 meter east. Notice that there are two vertical vectors. And they also are in opposite directions. Thus, we can subtract them. Resultant vector is 14 meters north. Then we combine the two resultant vectors. They are perpendicular to each other. We can use the Pythagorean theorem. From this we can get the final resultant vector, R. Using the Pythagorean theorem, the final resultant, R, can be solved. The magnitude is 26.93 meters. Using the trigonometric function, tangent, we can now solve the angle theta. The direction angle theta is 31.3 degrees. Therefore, the final resultant vector, r, is 26.93 meters at 31.3 degrees north of east.